For some families, football is simply just a way of life. Most football fans will point to the Mannings as the ideal football family. And then you have other famous football families like the Matthews family and the Watts, of course. But today we'll be talking about the Mocks, who are from Canton, Ohio, and are no different than any other football family I listed above. Football has, and still is, just a way of life for this family. Ben Mock, the oldest son of two boys, was a three-star quarterback and had a storied high school career, breaking many records. Mock, at the time, was celebrated as one of the greatest quarterbacks to ever come out of the state of Ohio at the time. You know, before this guy. Ben led a Cincinnati Bearcats squad led by current Notre Dame head coach Brian Kennedy to its best season in program's history. However, Ben was overshadowed by his more infamous famous brother, former quarterback, Matty Mock. As most SEC and college football fans know, Matty got himself into a little bit of trouble during his time in Columbia. After he set the SEC on fire and won like no other quarterback in Missouri football history had done before, it all eventually came crashing down after being suspended three times and Mock was finally dismissed from the team. And I will say that Matty, in my opinion, did get possibly set up by a possible enemy or who knows what, but I do believe he received a raw deal close to the end of his time at Mizzou. You will find out about that more later on. Today we will chronicle the life of Matty Mock, from his time at Mizzou as a rising star to being suspended and later kicked off the team and how he was able to turn his life around for the better. Before we get started today, don't forget to like and subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can make sure you can be able to watch all my other uploads that are going to be coming up in the near future. I will be trying to upload a lot more since I've gotten rid of my PS4. Um, you, you know, you know why. When Mock landed at Mizzou from Kenton, Ohio, he was a highly talented four-star prospect playing under his dad, Mike, just like his older brother, Ben. Mock was a standout in high school and still holds the national high school career records for passing completions, passing attempts, and passing yards, all of which were previously held by his brother, Ben. In addition to being a star on the football field, Matty was also a high school all-district selection in basketball and qualified for the Ohio State track meet in four different events. So, just off that information alone, you could tell that this guy was clearly a natural athlete. So, this guy, he just, he had it. Mock had offers from multiple Power 5 schools like Notre Dame, Michigan, and Illinois, just to name a few. But, Mock eventually decided to go sign with Gary Pinkle and play for the Mizzou Tigers. The beginning of the 2013 season, Mock, who registered a year, was in the mix for the QB1 position against returning starter James Franklin. Despite Mock's best efforts, Pinkle ended up going with Franklin for the season opener against Murray State. Pinkle explains his decision to go with Franklin over Mock. It was just the right time to do it, Pinkle said. I didn't want to wait any further on that. James has certainly done really, really well and deserves to be there. He is very competitive. It'll be fun to see him go through this year injury-free and do the things he is capable of doing. Oh boy, was Pinkle wrong for jinxing his quarterback future help? Heading into the fifth game of the season versus the seventh-ranked Georgia Bulldogs, Franklin went down with a shoulder injury, and this moment was the beginning of one of the best stretches of quarterback play by Mizzou quarterback in history. Mock came into the game with a 28-26 lead in the fourth quarter, and ultimately helped the Tigers the rest of the way to a 41-26 victory. Although he didn't set the stat sheet on fire, only attempting three passes after taking over for Franklin, a win is a win, right? Especially at this place. Mock's coming out party, however, came next game in his first full start against none other than the Florida Gators. You want to know how Mock performed in this game? <laughs> That's right, look at those highlights. Mock threw for 295 yards and one touchdown, improving the Tigers' record to 7-0, their best start since 2010. 
for his performance against the Gators, Mock earned SEC Freshman of the Week honors, and led the Tigers the rest of the season, finishing at a 12-2 record, and won a victory in the Cotton Bowl versus Oklahoma State. After only two seasons in the, in the SEC, earning many a cult-like status amongst fans and students. Despite all of his success on the field, trouble did arise off the field. In late August 2013, Mock was arrested on suspicion of four traffic-related offenses. According to University of Missouri campus police, they suspected Mock struck two parked vehicles while riding his scooter in the early morning hours of August 29th. Mock was with two female pastors and fled the scene. Mock refused to pull over for authorities, and on top of that, they ran a stop sign. Later that morning, Mock turned himself into police and was charged with four misdemeanors, which were eventually all dropped once security cameras showed that he did not hit any parked cars. Mock was released that same afternoon after posting a $1,000 bond. This trend of Manny getting himself into trouble, you know, under really odd circumstances and mishaps, is something that you'll see throughout this video and really pervade throughout his time in Columbia. Coming into the 2014 season, Mizzou had a lot of expectations. After coming off a 10 plus 1 season, many expected the Tigers to repeat as SEC East champions. Through three games, that hype seemed to be coming to fruition. But after problems arose in a loss versus a 4-win Indiana team and a close win over South Carolina, the frustration reached a climax. Just a week later, at, in a shutout at the hands of those same Georgia Bulldogs where Matty Mock started his Missouri career at, Mock only completed 9 out of 21 passes and threw for 97 yards and got picked off four times in that game. Four. Four times. Following the Georgia game, Mock and the Tigers rebounded within seven out of eight games, finishing the season at 11-3, and, and ultimately winning the SEC East. After another successful season at Mizzou, things would suddenly take a tragic turn for the worse for Mock and his family. That summer leading into his junior season, his dad and former high school coach, Mike Mock, was diagnosed with stage 3 cancer. That was essentially the moment in Maddie's life that changed everything. In a quote from an article from the St. Louis Post-Dispatch, Mock said that he was dealing with his dad's illness and wasn't using that as an excuse. He said he used marijuana a couple times and he said he couldn't sleep. He said he was stupid, but he wasn't, but he really wasn't worried about his well-being. He was just trying to keep his mind off other stuff. Unders I mean, understandable. The kid was going through a tough time. You gotta cut him some slack, but. My voiceover narration went a little bit longer than expected, so I'll be making a part two to this video. This is a very interesting story that we already know a whole lot about. Maddie, Maddie came on the scene so unexpectedly and really just lit the SEC East on fire, so I just think it may have gotten to him a little bit and just the pressures of trying to live up to his legend that he built for himself, deservedly so, was just tough. And just on top of his dad having cancer, it's like the kid didn't really catch a break during this time in Columbia. Again, guys, I appreciate the support. Make sure you go out there and like and subscribe and comment down below in the comment section and just watch out for that part too. Thanks again, guys. One.